very often people hurt us and when they do we tend to develop a very gloomy outlook on life altogether you know we have to learn to let go of expectations from people and really at the end of the day you can only control your own behavior you can't control anybody else and so when people have disappointed you and have hurt you and relationships have gone bad then it's really really important for you to take a step back and really find what gives you peace rediscover your connection with Allah but at the same time also take care of your own mental emotional and physical health eat right do exercise do things that make you feel good and also engage in prayer and recitation of Quran things like that and don't overwhelm yourself don't dwell on thinking about what people have done to you because that'll eat away at you and you're just going to be miserable love is effortless or love is supposed to be effortless that if you love someone and they love you and you know if they're your soulmate and all that love is not going to require any work that you don't have to put anything into your relationship you either love the person or you don't and the reality of the matter is that love the truth is that love always requires work and that's that's love in your relationship not only with your spouse it's with anyone who you love, right? Even your parents, who you have that natural inborn love, you can increase that love, you can strengthen that love by being obedient to your parents, for example, right? doing things for your parents, being kind and generous to your parents, or you can decrease that love by being disrespectful to your parents and things like that. Um, that, you know, we, we have physical needs, we have emotional needs and we have spiritual needs, okay? And for the most part, if your physical and emotional needs are taken care of, then you're able to, to further yourself spiritually. It's, it becomes easier for you. A lot of times you're going through an emotional kind of trauma. You're going literally going through depression. If you were to be diagnosed, you'd be diagnosed with depression or you have serious anxiety or you have panic attacks or you have, you have these things that, that, that really need professional help. You need to talk to someone and work through your emotions. You need a counselor, you need a therapist. This is an emotional problem. And, but then we're told, this is a spiritual problem. You're not connected in your salah, you're always sad, you're not optimistic, therefore something is wrong with your iman. That is so bad, because I'm already depressed, and now I'm being told I'm a bad person also. <laughs> That's not gonna help. So when people are in that state, if, you're, if you find yourself hopeless, you know, dis disconnected, not interested in doing anything, it's hard for you to get out of bed, what's the point of it all anyway? If you're finding yourself depressed like that, maybe it's good that you seek some professional help. Because that getting that psychiatric help, getting that counseling help, I'm telling you, is going to help you spiritually also. Uh, let's not, you know, make our happiness and our peace and our hopes associated with other people. You have to find your peace yourself, and you have to find your peace with Allah. Just a, a little additional comment to the, you know, thinking that you're going to change someone once you get married. Well, your parents, who love you more than anyone who will ever love you, can't change you about this issue. Sometimes we, when you, when you marry someone with the intention that they will complete me or that they will make me better and all that, uh, we tend to leave, put our self-worth in their hands. Right? We tend to tell ourselves that if my spouse... Um, you know, they're the ones who are going to make me feel better about myself. And they're the ones who are going to make me whole. And we forget that our self-worth is truly defined, at least according to Islam, our self-worth is defined by our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's an amazing, unbreakable thing. That when a person puts their self-worth in their piety or their relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will be secure in their relationship because they don't need, they don't have that need to have their spouse always tell them that you're amazing or you're perfect, which is all good, alhamdulillah, it's something that spouses should do. They should encourage one another and, and praise one another, but they don't rely on that single factor to make, them seal, make themselves feel whole or make themselves feel complete. But the Prophet that I'm is teaching Zahir عن, here is that your value doesn't depend on your looks on what people, how people see you and, and whether they think you're a valuable person or not. He tells him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells Zahir radiallahu ta'ala, he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finds you valuable. And here we see the Prophet teaching the companions about self-worth, where their self-worth lies. 
And it's very important that before people jump into a relationship or get into a relationship, they understand that. That in the end of the day, their spouse may be happy with them, they may be upset at them, they may be proud of them, they may be disappointed with you, like your spouse may be disappointed at you, but your self-worth is directly tied to your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If someone loves you, so someone, they, they'll tell themselves, like, if this person really loves me, then they will change for me. So they'll tell themselves that, you know, even though, once again, we may not be compatible, we may have a lot of issues, a lot of differences, but we love each other. And inshallah ta'ala, we'll, we'll make it work. And I know, like, there's things I don't like about her, but I will change her, inshallah. And out of her love for me, she will change. Or she may be telling herself, out of his love for me, it will change. And as they say, love conquers all, right? Have you guys heard that? Love conquers all. So they say, you know what? We'll get through all of this because of our love. And subhanAllah, this is this, once again one of, one of the main issues that I've seen is that when people get over that infatuation stage, they realize that it's very, very hard to change someone else. And it's really that person who ha has to want to change themselves. And once you're no longer infatuated with the person and it's no longer, you're past that honeymoon stage or whatever they call it, five, six months, four months, two months, depending on who you ask, right? Once you're past that stage, it's very difficult. So I always tell young couples, I say, listen, this person, the way they are in front of you right now, the way you see them, marry them, keeping in mind or, or telling yourself that they're never going to change. And if you're happy with them the way they are right now, then go ahead and get married. Once again, another case study. Uh, someone came to me, I was talking to this couple, um, they're having issues with one another. And one of, one of the things that I came to realize is that they had very unrealistic expectations from each other. And then one of the problems was that the, the sister, when talking to her, I realized that she, her concept of love is very skewed because she believes that her husband has to love her no matter what, right? Whether she's a good wife or not, what she does or not, it doesn't matter. This is your soulmate. The love will always be there. Right? It does not depend on what you do for your spouse. And same thing, like the same thing happens on the guy's side as well. And especially, I would say, especially on the guy's side, where a guy says, "You're my wife. You have to love me no matter what." Right? Or, or especially like if you believe you married your soulmate, that because you're my soulmate, this love will be there. It doesn't matter how we treat each other or what we do that love cannot be broken. And once again, when people begin to see that their love is, doesn't have that same factor and that their spouse doesn't love them unconditionally, they may resort to saying something like, maybe you're not the right person for me. Maybe you're not my soulmate or something like that. So people will get married and they don't understand some basic things that a person should know before they enter into a relationship. For example, just the simple fact or understanding that men and women are different. There are times when women react differently to situations and men react differently. There's nothing you can do to change the person. There's going to be the times when your spouse reacts in a certain way and you just cannot understand it. You have no choice but to accept it. You can bang your head on the wall, you can go crazy, you can pull your hair out, you can do whatever you want, but this is how she understands the situation. You know, having children is one of the most joyous experiences in a person's life. And to start questioning whether or not you even want to bring children into the world must mean you've gone through some very, very heavy things. And I pray that Allah makes those, those, those trials, those scars healed so your view of the world is not so gloomy. Having children is a, is a blessing and it's a ni'mah of Allah. This world was always full of trials. It's not full of trials right now. It was always full of trials. And it's a mercy of Allah that He put in us the desire to have children and to continue life on this earth. The beauty of this earth and the goodness of this life far outweighs its difficulties. And she doesn't know whether when she's suffering abuse from her husband and her in-laws, whether or not that if she wants to end the marriage because she's suffering from abuse, whether or not she's being patient or not. Meaning her parents are telling her, you know, this kind of abuse, this kind of humiliation, this kind of insult, or your husband losing his temper at you and getting angry and threatening you, or your in-laws insulting you, and all of those things happens to everybody. It happened to me, it happened to, you know, when I was younger, you know, your, your, your grandparents did that to me, so it's just life. That's okay, you just have to have sabr. You're overreacting. 
Um, and so I feel like it's really overwhelming and it's really degrading and humiliating. But my parents tell me that I just don't have enough patience and I have to, this is just how life is supposed to be. So what is the truth here? Am I, am I not being patient? And I answered her the way I would answer my own sister. If this was my younger sister telling me that this is what she's going through in her family, this is what I would tell her. Listen, marriage and divorce are choices. You marry who you want and you have the right to divorce when you feel that you are not at peace in that marriage. People came to the Prophet ﷺ asking for a divorce. Women came and asking for a divorce and did not justify their rationale. And even when they did, the Prophet never said to any one of them, just be patient. Never once. Never once. The entire Quran, the exhaustive discourse on divorce, there are several pages dedicated to divorce in Baqarah. There's an entire surah dedicated to the divorce, Surah Al-Talaq, the 65th surah. And yet, Allah Azza wa never once condemned it. Never once said, why, how dare you divorce? He said in one place, in Surah An-Nisa, he said, uh, you know, and if you are going to divorce them, you know, maybe, Asa an karihtum shay'an wa yaj'ala Allahu fihi khayran kathira. Maybe you hate something, but Allah put a lot of good in it. Allah put a lot of good in it. But in the very next ayah, he says, وَإِنْ أَرَدْتُمْ مُسْتِبْدَالَ زَوْجٍ مَكَانَ زَوْجٍ وَآتَيْتُمْ إِحْدَهُ النَّقِ انْتَارًا And if you still decide to replace a spouse with another, go on and marry somebody else, Allah opened that door. What I'm trying to tell you is not go, go on and get divorced. Or you don't have to have patience in your marriage. But understand something. If somebody decides that they don't want to be in a relationship because they find it emotionally or any other way abusive, and she even said these words. She said, it seems they can do anything they want and that's okay. And I said, what? Until you have broken bones? She goes, yeah, until then, probably anything, everything else is okay. And even if I had broken bones, and some others have told me, even if I had broken bones, my parents would probably tell me, it's okay, it's just one bone. You know? And we don't understand sometimes that psychological torture, emotional torture, degradation and humiliation and abuse and neglect and dismissing somebody, these are serious things. And the, sometimes husbands do these to wives and sometimes wives do this to husbands. And when this happens, you have a right to say, I don't want to do this anymore. Let's go seek help. And if you don't want to get help, if you don't want to make changes, then I don't want to be in this abusive relationship anymore. It's okay to draw that line. You're not un-Islamic for wanting to get out of a, an abusive relationship. You're not. You did not do anything wrong. If you want to get out, that's your call. And you're not better, a better Muslim or a worse Muslim because you want to get out of an abusive relationship. You should seek therapy. You should seek help. You should do everything you can to save a relationship. But if a relationship has become a one-way street, then no. Then no. Then you don't, you're not compelled by Islam to stay. You are not. That is not... I don't, I've been trying to understand this religion for the last 20 years. I've been trying to study this book and understand it. I cannot find any justification that people should remain miserable for the sake of Allah. Nope. That is just not the case. So... You know, and, and by the way, to the parents who say this to their daughters, how dare you? How dare you pass down abuse? We were abused, so it's okay for you to be? This is the mercy you show your kids? We're supposed to never... You know, I can't imagine my if, if my daughter came to me and said that. For me to say to her, it's okay. Yeah, I went through that. So it's okay. You can, you can handle it. I couldn't stand it. I can't stand sometimes how people in our in many of our cultures, Indian, Pakistani culture, I don't know enough about Arab culture to be able to say in our cultures, to be able to show our face to the community is more important. That's more important. And to show mercy to our children is less important. That's that to me is disgusting. That to me is disgusting. So may Allah Azza wa Jal, you know, and yes, it, it does take great strength and great power, but I also understand that nobody should be guilting you religiously that you're doing something religiously wrong when you want to get out of abuse, when you want to get out of a, a, you know, a miserable situation. If you're unhappy, if you're not satisfied, if you're not, you know, if you're not being taken care of, if you're falling into, like you're getting these evil thoughts in your head because of this abusive relationship, if you have like resentment towards your spouse for years and years, why are you in it? Yeah, this the purpose of marriage is لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا So you can find comfort and peace in them. If the peace isn't there, what are you doing there? What are you? And then people, here's the last one. People give you the crazy example. Be like Nuh a.s. He was with his wife for 950 years. Yo, if you give that example, then you're saying that this guy's wife is Nuh a.s. wife. <laughs> That's not the best example to give. 
and are the best examples are those of our Prophet وسلم, and how he taught this ummah how to deal with this subject. There are some things in Islam that are your choice, they are your decision. Allah is not putting that on you, do, do it this way or do it that way. If that was, then Allah would have put in his book, it's wrong for you to get divorced, or it's wrong for you to, or this, these are the reasons you should stay, and these are the reasons you should go. This is Allah's guidance until the end of time. And marriage is the most important institution, and yet Allah gave us free reign in this area, and He made He gave us the room to make those decisions ourselves. May Allah protect our families, may Allah protect our marriages, may Allah give us the courage and the humility to seek help to protect or to preserve when a marriage is falling apart, and may Allah also make us able to get away from abusive relationships.